trying to break at, break down the uh, preseason opener and you're facing an un, a team that isn't an NBA team and was undermanned, how much can you take in terms of drawing any sort of real evaluations of your players and, and how they play? Uh, yeah, you don't want to get too presumptuous. I mean, obviously it's good we could win and, and play well. You know, there are obviously some things that we, you know, need to improve upon. Uh, things that we've stressed, we didn't see as much carryover in those areas that we liked, uh, but there were a lot of positives. You know, I thought things we really lean into, our tempo, you know, getting the ball in and up, you know, up the floor, initiating our actions early in the clock. We did that, uh, we played downhill. Uh, overall shot profile was terrific. Um, as far as finding the, the shots we, uh, you know, we want to incentivize, those two areas were great. Uh, transition defense was, a little lacking and for different reasons, and then the um, defensive rebounding piece was something that's you know a little concerning. But beyond that, you don't want to get uh, you know overexcited one way or the other about a preseason game. Just kind of a gauge as far as where we were um, after seven practices. You know, I think there are a lot of positives. When you're talking about shot profile, are you talking about what your defense wants to allow or your offense, what you want your own shooting? In, in general, offense, but, you know, controlling shot profile on both sides of the ball is important. We, we obviously want to pri we're prioritizing our paint, you know, our rim protection. We want to take away, you know, obviously all uncontested threes, force teams ideally to beat us with tough contested twos. Preferably outside the paint, correct? Preferably, yes. Okay. Yes. Like most about the continuity and the flow of your offense last night. Well, I mean, we we got going early, which was great. I thought, um, you know, a lot of our offense was uh, spurred by our defense. You know, and it could have been bad, bad offense, but we were in the right spot at the right time um, on a, a number of possessions, which is great. The, the deflections, hand activity. Um, Gaff had five blocks, so overall, you know, felt like the defense was moving. Uh, we were communicating pretty well um, in our strength spots for the most part, and that helped us protect the paint. Uh, it's, it's just you know finishing possessions, you know, being able to gang rebound all five well, it was a little bit of an issue for us. Could you have scripted a better first bucket for Bilal, getting a steal <laughs> and a dunk? No, I, I, it's by design. Yeah. We drew that up, so just you know, it's an easy one for you. It's going kind of speaks to what he's been doing in camp. You know, yeah, and hands. we're seeing it more and more, which is a positive. Um, there, there's a comfortability with that. I think, you know, like I said last night, he's leaning into that side of the ball as part of his identity. And he knows if he can guard at an elite level, there's there's minutes. There's, so um, let the offense come. You know, I think stay aggressive, which, you know, he showed at times playing in the open floor, playing downhill. But, um, you know, do your work on the defensive end and let that generate easy offense for you. You've been around a lot of rookies, but for him, does he seem to kind of understand where his minutes will be earned? I think so. Yeah, well, I think so. I mean, he, there's a, and I've used this term, youthful maturity about him. Um, uh, and I don't know if that's just he's, he's played professionally at a young age, he's been around a little bit, but there's a level of composure and poise, you know, which are unique, I think, for teenagers. But, you know, on this stage, it's, it's, it's really encouraging. Will anyone who didn't play last night be available tomorrow? Uh, yes. <laughs> hmm. uh, so, you know, as far as everyone other than Landry was, uh, you know, participant today, and it's good to see Denny out there. Um, you know, Mike, of course, is, you know, he'll probably play tomorrow as well. And, and it's one of those things where I wanted to make sure we had some run. We had a lot of guys. So, you know, um, maybe platooning some guys tomorrow and giving other guys a chance, um, see what it looks like. The Hornets were eighth in pace last year, at least according to basketball reference. Does that give you guys a good test in terms of trying to play a little faster? Yeah. Well, not only that, but it's going to test our transition defense. You know, um, you know, Alonzo does a pretty good job, Lamelo rather, does a great job of kicking that ball ahead. Um, it's one of his strengths. You know, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on us early in the clock. Um, it's going to test our, our paint defense um, and the rebounding piece. They've been uh, a problem for us the past two years. so. You know, some carryover from the, last night, but you know, we, we got to be better. Who's Bilal going to be assigned to? Uh, we'll see. What did you 
you like most about Tyus Jones and his attack to the paint, not just as a scorer, but as a facilitator as well? It's one of his strengths. Um, we've seen it. He's dynamic in pick and rolls. To your point, not necessarily the score, but he's going to make the right read. He has the ability to, you know, fire that ball to the weak side corner, and he's got vision that's, you know, almost uncanny. But there's a steadiness, you know, with him, and you can tell he's, he's trying to coach up some of the young players. He does a great job of keeping us organized. And, you know, uh, historically, I mean, high assist, low turnover guy. You know, what, what's not to love about that? In what ways is his game similar to Monte? Um, I mean, you could say in stature, but I, I, they're similar as far as high assist, low turnovers. Um, you know, I think he's got more comfortability shooting the three off the bounce. But, you know, they're, they're similar. Coach, I want to ask you about Johnny. He looked really comfortable, really poised last night. And after what he went through during his rookie year, bouncing between the G League and the NBA, how do you expect him to bounce back this year? Well, that was uh, one of the things we uh, talked about, you know, maybe a week ago. He wants to find his way in the rotation. That's kind of one of his goals. And I think that's a, it's a great goal for him to have. Um, you know, he's going to find ways to push himself. He's got to push guys in front of him. Um, he's got to find a way to, you know, show us that day-to-day -day improvement. We've seen it thus far this summer. And I think he's on the right track. Uh, but, you know, it's early. So he's got to continue to just do it every day. And over the offseason, do you know if he's worked with a specific shooting coach or a trainer to refine his skill set or what he's been up to? Oh, he's been around here quite a bit, um, which has been terrific. You know, just learning how uh, we need him to play, playing downhill, being aggressive. Uh, he's done a better job of finishing. Um, the shots, it's going to come. He's got a lot more confidence, you know, in it now than he did last year. Um, and, and I want him to just make sure he's taking the right ones. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Gaff's block? Which one? <laughs> he had five of them, so uh, yeah, he's got. A, he's going to be a guy for us to uh, be a dominant rim protection guy for us. I mean, he'll be a defensive anchor. Um, thought he was pretty good in the pick and roll defense, and you know we just got to give him a little bit more help on the defensive glass. I mean, he's out there a little bit on an island, so our smalls got to get back in the mix. You know, get in the fray and help. I heard there's a balance sometimes with shot blockers of keeping the ball in play as opposed to sending it into the 21st row as opposed to intimidation. Yeah, yeah. Like, where do you stand on the art of shot blocking? Well, no, I wasn't never known as a shot blocker. <laughs> I would surmise uh, there is a balance. Um, you know, some guys have a knack to, you know, do so and, to your point, keep it in play. A little bit more discretion. Some guys just go for brute force and intimidation factors. I think there's a place for it, yeah. um, but making the right play, you know, and sometimes just getting to the ball, making a play at the rim, it is what it is, and you live with the, the result. Um, but he, he's shown that he can be a lead at it, so we, we're, we're going to need him to do it nightly. What's your biggest takeaway from the game yesterday, the preseason game last night? The win. I think that's the biggest thing for me. I just like to win, and I like to do whatever I have to do to help my teammates win. And the manner in which you won the game on the offensive side, what did you like most about the rhythm on the offensive end for the team? Just playing cohesiveness and just all of us coming together. We've been together for a while now, so just all of us coming together and learning how to play together and getting ready for the season, to be honest. What do you think about the opportunity uh, just in signing here? It's a great opportunity. Um, I'm very familiar with a few faces here, so it was a great opportunity to come here. And I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to play the basketball every day, so that's the biggest thing for me. How much does it help having that familiarity with Will Dawkins from your Oklahoma City days? It feels good. He used to check up on me, make sure I was good when I was at Oklahoma. So just having him again in my corner has, has been really great for me. And uh, last night you came in second half, and I think you dropped more points than you played minutes. So yeah. how good does it feel getting that confidence builder in the first game? These guys know me. I'm always ready to compete. I, I compete very high level, and I, I do anything I can just to win. And I come out and give my heart out every time I step on the court. So. Is there a certain area of your game you're working on trying to refine specifically? Yeah, shooting this summer is what I really worked on and just playing uphill, playing within my teammates and playing within the system. Biggest thing for me, yeah. What is Will Dawkins like? You know him better than any of us. Yeah, yeah. great guy, great guy, um, talkative, <laughs> great guy though, but um, family, very big family guy and always he has your back every time, so yeah. Personality-wise, is he different from Sam Presti? Is he... They're both, they're both like my father figures when I'm in the league, so they're both great to me, and I love both of them. What prompted you to select this opportunity as opposed to somewhere else? Definitely will, for sure will. 
just me having the relationship I have with him and um, me knowing what I can to bring to this team, that was the biggest thing for me to come here. You mentioned your uh, competitive edge. It's something that Wes has raved about. Where does that come from? Where I'm from. Uh, I grew up in Rexel, in a small neighborhood in Toronto. A lot of people don't make it from where I came from. It's kind of slums, quote unquote slums. So every day you get on that, every time I get the opportunity to come on that court, I'm not playing for just myself. I'm playing for everybody back home. Off Highway 27? Yeah, Off Highway 27. You're <laughs> in there. Okay. Yeah, you know so. You know so. Uh, have you had any conversations having the uh, AI uh, relationship with Jamal and like preparing for the NBA, what to expect, that type of thing. Have you ever had any conversations yeah, with them? I always talk to those guys, talk to Jamal, talk to Don, talk to Dylan Brooks, all of them, just to get, uh, just to understand the game more. They've been in the league longer than I have, so just picking their brain is a big thing for me. And just bringing that competitive attitude. They know me, so they know how I play, so they already know that. As long as they continue to give me that advice, I'm going to keep following it. Your size at a small forward is more coveted when it comes to money making overseas than it would be here in the NBA. What went into your decision to stick here and try to make yourself a, a rotation player, have a role with an NBA team rather than going and making money and being coveted overseas? I love for the game. I love playing NBA basketball and um, coming here to compete and just proving myself is the biggest thing for me. And that's what I always take every time I step on the court. The, your motor obviously stands out. Um, yeah, 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 how do you kind of just uh, set aside fatigue and just give 100% max effort. I'm always time. ready to go. You kind of set yourself in the summer to be conditioned and be ready to go. I'm willing to do the little things that a lot of the guys don't want to do. So that's what I always do. I bring the, the chip to the game. Why are you like that? Like I said, where I'm from, Rexville, Ontario. That's exactly where I get it from. Why 97? 97 is my birth year, and it's a number that no one could take from you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Been in DC a couple months. How are you settling in off the court? How do you like the city? I love it. I take walks. I chill. My family comes sometimes to visit, so it's been great. You got a favorite restaurant? Not yet. Actually, I do. A Jamaican restaurant, Jam Duck style, really yes. good. Y'all should check it out. <laughs> Y'all should check it out. <laughs> it's it's yeah. as close to Ralph's as you're gonna get. Yeah, 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 very close. What's your recollection of the game you played for Detroit last season against Washington, but late in the season? Yeah, it's it's. It's, a, it's different roles, I believe. It's different systems, different coaching styles. But you just got to come into a new system and adapt. And I, that's the biggest thing for me. I feel like I can always come into different systems and just glue it whatever I can. Well, I ask because it, I mean, you were all over the place that, that yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Just hoping, competitive, being competitive. I want to win so bad that even I don't care, I don't look at the scores. I just want to win and I want to go hard. Any chance I get an opportunity, I'm going to go out there and give them all. Defensively, where are you most comfortable? What position? Any. I want to. I take that chip by on my shoulder. And I told Coach West that anytime he needs to put me somewhere, I'll guard anyone he needs me to guard. And that's my biggest thing for me. I suppose if a scout were here, she or he would say, "Well, he's got the frame of a three, mm -hmm. maybe a four, but mm -hmm. how comfortable are you guarding a five and banging with a five? No, I'm strong enough. I'm very strong. Yeah, I'm very strong, but. It's, it's 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 challenging sometimes, but you just gotta. It's the mental part that comes into it from there, and I think that's what separates me from a lot. You, talking about your background, it sounds like you know you beat the odds even more than the average NBA player. Yeah. W when did you start to realize it was possible? I started playing basketball in tenth grade, so I, I started grade. late. Yeah, I played soccer. I'd knock dudes over, and then I kind of just switched it over, and <laughs> I love the game since. But it would have been one hell of a sweeper. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? I know, yeah, for sure. Uh, what prompted you to transfer from Rutgers to Oregon? Coaching and um, just family. Like, uh, guys like that played in my neighborhood, Dylan Brooks and those guys, just kind of give me the inside of if I want to chase my dream of NBA level talent, go to Oregon and it separates you from all. And thank God, Coach Allman came my life, and now I'm here. I asked Wes about your block last night. He said, which one? Because you had five. Yeah. But I think you probably know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, the one in the corner? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what was that play like for you? Um, I mean, you know, just doing what the landlord does, you know, pretty much. <laughs> um, I honestly thought he was going to pump fake. I just ended up just jumping because I felt that I was out of position defensively. But I made a play. So. What did you like most about the offensive continuity last night? Um, really just, you know, our consistency with our pace. You know, we got the ball out. We got over the, we got over half court plenty of times before the shot clock even got to, you know, 20. And we got into our offense and, you know, we just felt, I just felt like we were a lot poised in those situations, just getting downhill, getting the shots that we wanted, getting the, I would say, looks that we wanted too. So at the end of the day, it was just really just like the consistency in that area.
And the pace is not just fast break opportunities, but in the quarter court, the pace I thought was a lot quicker as well. What do you think was the reason for that? Um, really just, you know, for sure our guard play. Our guards really just took, took control of the game last night, you know, and they made sure that every time we got down, every time we got into our offense, they made sure they facilitated. Whether it was, you know, Tyus, Jordan, even Kuz came down, he was facilitating too. So pretty much everybody came down and just did, you know, the job that they were assigned. When you first got injured, it sounded like you might miss opening night, mm -hmm. and then here you are, you came back pretty quickly. How did you recover so quickly? Um, really just taking my time. You know, they said two to four weeks. You know, I said I was going to try to get back in two. I didn't want to rush it, though, so if I weren't, wasn't going to get back in two, I was going to just take my time, of course, to really just, you know, maintain a sustained work ethic of just rehab. You know, I wanted to come back in 100%. I felt like I was good enough to go. So I got into some actions and whatnot with some contact play, you know, a couple of, I think it was the day before a game or two days before. Um, and just really just felt good. So I was like, you know, if I can go, I want to go. But if I can't, I'll make sure I take a step back and just, you know, listen to my body. When the injury occurred, did you think it was a serious injury? Um, I've kind of had injuries like this before in the past, of course, but I was young, so I kind of bounced back quicker. Um, but right now, just, you know, going through our life, getting older, you got to really just make sure I take care of the little things. And something with an elbow, that's, that's really, like, little, but at the same time, it's serious. So I just wanted to make sure that I had full range of motion. I didn't have any pain doing anything out there on the floor. And like I said, just taking it one step at a time. Because usually I've tried to rush through injuries in the past and I made it worse. So I, don't, I didn't want to do that at this point. Was it a freak injury or an indication of how physical these pickup games were? Before? Well, in all honesty, it was... Yeah, it was kind of like in between, you know, because if I mean, if there were if there was any way the video got leaked of me, you know, taking that fall or anything, you guys would have seen that I'm real flexible for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Was your arm like twisted? Um, no. So it was the the way it, I fell. Of course, bad slip, and I, I of course hit the splits. I felt like Michael Jackson at the time, but I <laughs> I didn't um. I didn't feel like Michael Jackson because of the pain. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it wasn't It wasn't a bad twist. Of course, it was just a sprain, just like a sprained ankle, you know. So mm -hmm. it took some time to get back to the usual me, but I'm back now, so I'm good. Daniel, we just had Eugene over here, and you faced mm -hmm. him. Yeah. What's it like to face a guy like that? And by that, I mean, like, with a motor like he's got? Oh, I hate it, um, 100%, you know, just because <laughs> it's always, it gets me to the point to where I'm always on my toes, you know. Guy that has a high motor going, crashing the glass, you know, setting screens. He can shoot the ball. Uh, he can shoot the ball, too. He just pretty much does all the little things and all the dirty things, too, you know. So he's a real hard worker, and he goes out and he gives 110%. So with that being said, being out there on the floor with him, you really have to bring your A game because there's a lot of guys in this league like that that can really sneak up on you in certain areas. He's not the tallest guy, mm -hmm. so how is it that he's effective? Uh, hard over height, you know, hard working. He has a hard work ethic. He comes out every day, he works on his game, and at the end of the day, he hustles. He gets the hustle plays, he gets the rebounds, he'll come and block shots, he'll come here and he'll, you know, lock, it, lock down the best offensive guy on the floor. He'll pretty much do anything you need him to do. Jordan said um, when he first got acquired by the Wizards, he sent you a bunch of clips about yeah. what you guys could do in the pick yeah. and roll. He yeah. said, could be like James Harden and Clint mm -hmm. Capella. Yeah. Um, so what, what was your reaction to hearing that from him? Oh, well, I mean, I was already ready for it, you know, because I already, like, you know, we got Jordan Poole coming, Tyus Jones, those guys. Just pretty much I was like, okay, yeah, now I just got to make sure I get find ways to get them downhill the easiest way possible. And that's going to make my job a lot more easier, just rolling to the basket and making plays out of the pocket. So when he sent me the clips, I was already ready for it. I was like, look, man, I was already looking at film and everything, you know. I'm about to say, because me and him, we were in the same class in high school, so I already knew his game a little bit too real crafty. So when he came over here, you know, my eyes lit up. It seems like that's a trend where players mm -hmm. come here and they're, they say they're excited to play with yeah. you because you're a lob threat. What's oh, yeah. it like just hearing that over and over? Um, it makes me feel good because, you know, like it shows that the things that I do don't go unnoticed when it comes to being on the floor out there. And just having guys coming in excited, ready to play with me, that helps me, you know, lock in a little bit more and just work consistently to be able to be in a position to where I can just be out there night in, night out, and not taking no steps back in my game. What was it like for you as a long-tenured Wizards player mm -hmm. to this summer to see the moves come off the board where suddenly Brad is gone, suddenly Kristaps is gone, um, Monte? Um, I mean, it, it was tough to see some of those guys go, of course, you know, but this league is a business, so I really can't get too deep into that. <laughs>
Jeff, Johnny Davis is trying to build upon and improve upon his mm -hmm. rookie season. And last night he looked really comfortable and very poised. What did you make of that, and what are you expecting from him this season? Um, I feel like he's a lot more comfortable in this game. You know, he comes in and he works hard every day, and he's, like, transferring that over to the actual game. And having somebody in front of him just helps him out, just really just work on his consistency and just work on his confidence. So I, I can't wait to see how he blooms this year.